Welcome to using Performance Monitor. So Performance Monitor is not actually a SQL Server monitoring tool. It's actually a Windows monitoring tool, but it's extremely handy for looking at a variety of SQL Server metrics to see exactly what's going on within SQL Server. The current version of Performance Monitor was actually introduced back in Windows 2000. So the look and feel has changed a little bit over time, but for the most part, no matter which version of Windows you're using, anywhere from Windows 2000 all the way up to Windows Server 2012, the tools are going to look basically the same. And once you know how to use one version of it, you'll be able to use all the versions of it. Performance Monitor shows thousands of different metrics, both for Windows and for SQL Server. So as you can imagine, there's a lot of information in there. So figuring out which metrics you need to look at are kind of key when it comes to troubleshooting SQL Server. Now, one of the nice things about Performance Monitor is you don't need to be on the local physical server to use it. Since its introduction, you've been able to connect to a remote machine in order to access the various metrics. Now, it is slow when you access the remote metrics because you are calling for them over the network, but you can still see a lot of information. A subset of the counters that are available within Performance Monitor can also be read through the sys.dm underscore os underscore performance underscore counters dynamic management view within SQL Server. This started with about SQL Server 2008 and can be extremely useful when it comes to looking and seeing what's going on just through T-SQL. Now, the only counters which are available through this dynamic management view are the SQL Server counters for that specific instance. If you've got multiple instances installed on a single SQL Server, you'd need to go ahead and log on to each instance and then query each instance's dynamic management view to get that instance's counters. If you don't, you'll only be able to get one set of counters. Let's go ahead and take a look at Performance Monitor and see how we use it and see where it can be found. The easiest way to find Performance Monitor is to open up the control panel and then open up the administrative tools window. From here, you'll find the Performance Monitor icon listed here. Once you've opened Performance Monitor, it'll look something like this. Now, this home screen will vary depending on which version of Performance Monitor you're using. In this particular case, I'm using Windows 8, which is the same version that you would see in Windows Server 2012. Just click on the Performance Monitor option, and you'll get the default monitoring screen. This shows you the default counter, which in this case is only the percent processor time counter. Depending on the version of Windows that you're using, you'll see different counters showing up here by default. You can remove counters by clicking the delete key, and that'll remove them from the current window. You can also add counters by clicking the add button. This then brings up the available counter screen. The counters that are available to you are going to vary depending on which version of SQL Server and Windows you have installed. In this case, I'm running Windows 8, running SQL Server 2012. Some of the counters that are very useful to look at are things like the physical disk counters. These tell you exactly what's going on at the hardware level and show you how many I.O. you're having to the disk, how long those I.O. are taking, and so on and so on. As you can see, as I scroll through the list, there's a large number of counters available just for the disk. Counters that I find very handy to look at are the average disk seconds per read and the average disk seconds per write. In this case, I want to look at them for both the C drive and the D drive. You can select multiple options in either box simply by holding on the control key and then clicking on multiple items like I've done here. You can then click Add, and that moves them over to the right-hand side into the Added Counters list. We can then scroll down and select some SQL Server counters as well. Let's go ahead and select the SQL Server Buffer Manager node, and let's look at the Buffer Cache Hit Ratio and the Page Life Expectancy. If I wanted to add counters from a remote computer, I could do so easily by putting my cursor into the Select Counters for Computer option at the top and either typing in a computer name or selecting an additional computer from this drop down list. Computers from this drop down list are only going to be populated based on the computers that I've selected and used within this tool during this session of the tool. Click OK. The counters I've selected are now populated into the window. 
as you can see, I've got almost no I.O. being generated on my local disk. My buffer cache hit ratio is 100%, and my page life expectancy is extremely high. This is because this computer has been on for a long amount of time, and nothing's been changing within this database. SQL Server's just been up and running doing nothing, as this is not a production system. So as you can see, the lines within the graph are extremely hard to look at. Let's go ahead and look at the physical disk counter, and you can see that this yellow line is extremely hard to find. We can click the highlight button at the top to highlight that line in black. That will highlight whatever line is selected. If we want to change the scale and make it a little easier to identify peaks and valleys, we can open up the specific counter and we can change the scale. By changing the scale, we can make the peaks and valleys easier to identify. We can do that with things like the page life expectancy, which are obviously at this point much higher than the graph allows for. Open it up and change the scale. You can use the apply button within the properties to adjust the scale as needed until you get the scale exactly where you want it. As you can see, when I've changed the scale, the line has moved down the chart. Now this line isn't going to move very much because it's simply increasing slowly, notch by notch, all the way up to 83,455 at this point. Performance Monitor offers more than just a real-time graph as well. We can look at historical information by clicking the Log Data View and selecting Log Files that we want to view. This requires that we have collected data using a data collector set. We can look at data in this graph format, and we can also use a histogram bar to see data in bar format. And again, this is useful for both the real-time and the historical data. We can also look at a report, which just gives us the raw numbers of all the counters we've selected. Counters are grouped by counter group, so that the disk counters are going to be together, as are the buffer manager counters. If we want to collect data analysis after the fact, we can use a data collector set. We do this by selecting data collector sets and then user defined. Right click and select new and then data collector set. We'll continue this demonstration in the next video.